what are the best storylines for the LEC to follow in 2020. Yes, hello Riven Mains and Yasuo Mains alike. I am the Nightwing, Way of Life Esports, coming at you guys with another League of Legends video. At the time of recording this video, it is currently New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve to everyone. Uh, it's been a great year uh, being able to produce League of Legends content for you, and I'm looking forward to all of our adventures in 2020. Now, with that being said, Previously, I did a best storylines to follow for the LCS, Cloud9 replacing Sneaky, TSM getting Dardock, Kankabe, Team Liquid gaining Broxa, Dignitas paying Huni 2.3 million, Golden Glue being the only uh, in a mid. There's going to be a lot of storylines for the LCS, and I think that when you look at the LEC, there's going to be also their own fair share of storylines, considering the fact that Everybody wants to take down G2 since they have the super team in the LEC. They have the best players pretty much in every single position. And you factor in every single team uh, wants to get to that point where they're able to take down G2. And that's what the goal should be of spring for any team that's not G2. I mean, Fnatic has the best chance of actually taking down G2 from their roster, and Fnatic has always uh, consistently been able to battle G2 as well. So let's see what is going to be the best storylines heading into the LEC to follow in 2020. All right, over the past two years, the LEC has rapidly become one of the best regions in League of Legends through its ability to nurture homegrown talent and European teams love for unique compositions and strategies the power balance in the lac has shifted quite a bit over the last couple of weeks though several familiar faces have moved on to greener pastures while newer players have taken their place to make a name for themselves on the biggest stage in the region some teams have stayed relatively the same hoping to build upon what they've gained in 2019 ultimately every team in the lac has one goal to overtake g2 esports who sit at the top at peak of Europe. The defending LAC champions had one of the best years of any Western team and were leaps ahead of the competition. They are the standard that top European teams hold themselves against. Can anyone stand up against G2 Esports this year? Will we see another rookie explode into the pro scene? Here are some of the best storylines to follow in the LAC in 2020. Yes, you saw that when G2 came back from MSI after winning the tournament is that um, you currently see the, all the players just looking at G2 just a lot differently now. And it was even Fnatic, had the players had talked about they obviously had a lot more respect for the G2 esports players for actually doing well internationally. And it was something that everyone in the region had felt that G2 had elevated everyone to get a lot better. And you obviously want to set that as a precedent for your region. And you must look at everyone else's perspectives and go, what can they improve on to really overcome uh, G2 with? They're going to have to figure out their own play style. They're going to have to figure out what makes their team better. They're going to have to figure out what is going to be the thing to make them, above all else, the best squad that they can be. So let's see about everything else. Okay, Young Buck aims to guide XL Esports to new heights. Former Fnatic coach Young Buck has finally found himself a clean slate over a struggling XL Esports squad that should improve under the tutelage of an experienced coach. The only thing is, will Young Buck's leadership be enough to push XL up the regular season standings? Young Buck has spoken about the multiple internal issues that plagued Fnatic throughout the year. Although he won't have these problems anymore, it's no secret that XL lacked the same firepower that the coach's old roster brought to the table. It's most likely going to be a rough year for Young Buck and his team in the beginning of 2020. Can this talented coach help this team grow to its full potential? Now, looking at Young Buck going to XL, I think that this is one of the more interesting stories for the year, given the fact that uh, Young Buck has been making his name as a six star of the what six star general. He won the four titles for G two, the two on Fnatic. He uh, still did pretty well in twenty nineteen, despite a lot of people actually thinking that he was not really a good coach for Fnatic. You got to factor in Fnatic were pretty 
linear to a certain extent with how they drafted and having the players play what they're most comfortable with was most likely the best thing for them. There was a lot of, we know, internal issues and, you know, from a lot of what people have said behind the scenes, it was like TL breaking point over there. So that's really crazy to honestly think about. And putting that pressure away from him on a new roster of players is going to be really good. Now, let's be honest here. XL are not going to win the split. Uh, their highest placing, I think, if I want to be truly nice with them, is that it, with Young Bucks coaching, I think that there will be a point where they're going to look pretty uh, mediocre for a bit, and then they will obviously play better towards uh, summer. But I do think that if they make it into playoffs, that's just a lot better. As we all know, best of ones are not the best clear indication of uh, you know the re real strong points of a team. I think that the best of threes are just the uh, better way to go personally. But I also think that you look at a team a lot differently from a best of five compared to best of ones. And maybe XL are a better team in best of fives, but we'll never actually know that until they get to that point. So once it gets to that point of being a much better team to be the good best of one team that they just need to be just averaging to get the playoffs, then we might see a better team in playoffs. Because remember, you can prep for playoffs a lot differently than... Uh, a best of one a best of one is really random you don't really know what, what what your opponent really could do obviously and there's just something that best of ones just don't do for you but can he guide them to newer heights I think he can I think a lot of people are really doubting just what a good coach he is he's probably one of the best coaches in the west currently at the moment I'm surprised nobody in North America took him I mean he would have been an upgrade in coaching staff over quite a bit of people from everything I was told about him so Looking at how he'll be on Excel without the pressure of Fnatic uh, being as a burden on him, I think it's going to be a better case for him. Everybody's um, favorite European AD carry. Nope, not Reckless. It is Forgiven. Welcome Forgiven to his comeback. I'm sorry. I'm just a weird crackhead and can't read. <laughs> sorry, I'm just making a joke. Welcome to Forgiven's comeback season. He's back. Forgiven was one of the most polarizing players to enter the European League scene, captivating fans with some great AD carry mechanics while also shocking people with his cockiness and attitude towards teammates and rivals alike. It's been years since he played in the LEC, but people can't help but expect great things from Schalke's new star starting AD carry. His return is one of the most anticipated events of 2020, but how much should we actually expect from someone who... Last played when H2K Gaming, uh, Giants Gaming, and Rocat were still in the league. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. It's a situation that would be best dealt with by expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. No matter what, you can expect Forgiven to bring his classic brash demeanor to entertain people on and off the rift. So, looking at Fnatic, uh, well, not Fnatic, next, that's next. Uh, looking at Forgiven... Forgiven hasn't really played since we know he's been off on his um, obligated army duty from his country. He's played on that origin squad that was in the EU master scene with Froggen and uh, the guy that invented the Lee Sin kick. Um, the Insect. Yeah, Insect. He was on a team with him at one point. That was the challenger team he was on. The last professional team he was on was H2K. Uh, we know that a lot of people uh, didn't really want him on their teams when he could play. I know he was obligated to be in the army, but he said he had chances to, you know, leave it if there was a team that would accept him. And there was a lot of teams that just, well, basically didn't want to do it. And, you know, I think that came down to if you're as polarizing as he is, that can be a good and bad thing for an org. But I think overall, that's a good thing for an org. We, we see... Players like him garner so many people's attention to that one org because then people are going to be like, God damn, that org is willing to take him on? They're like, I like somebody like that. And, you know, a lot of these orgs could benefit from players like Forgiven, though they do bring their, you know, good and bad qualities. I think that if they're a really good player like him, I think that it benefits you more having them than not having them. Now, since everyone is just a sensitive little bitch nowadays... Well, I mean, hey, he might get kicked off Shulk after a split. Like I said before, 
uh, certain things for spring are not always set in stone. There's always stuff changing. There's always going to be internal issues and problems uh, because... We look at every single spring split, summer split that I've currently seen since, like, what, 2015? Uh, there's always something changing. I mean, he could easily get kicked. I mean, it's it's happened before. I mean, not everything is set in stone uh, for a lot of teams, yeah, even during spring. You know, there's never, I'm confirmed this is our starting roster uh, because they always currently always change it up anyway. So, uh, looking at how forgiven is still pretty much, I think he's, a better AD carry than Reckless, but the issue with Forgiven is that he's never really ever actually showed that when it really matters to a consistent point like Reckless. So let's just see how he's going to work with his new squad, where he's going to play with the uh, worst, best jungler in God Gilius coming up. Yes, Gilius used to play, play with Licorice. Yeah, it's crazy, right? All right. Fnatic looks for a fresh start with Selfmade and Mythy. It's an interesting year for Fnatic fans who watched their team claw its way into the 2019 World Championship only to falter against Fun Plus Phoenix in the tournament's quarterfinals. It was an end to a year that would have been successful for many other teams but for Fnatic was a step down from what people have gotten used to. The team will be welcoming a new face to the roster for the spring split. Selfmade is joining the team next year, replacing Broxa while Youngbuck is getting replaced by former support star Mythy. It's not certain how these changes will affect the internal issues the team has been dealing with, but sometimes fresh faces can bring in new perspectives to lingering problems. Hopefully for Fnatic fans, these new perspectives can help Fnatic jump back up to the apex of the LEC next year. So when people always say a top team getting even further than they are, I mean, between first and second place, you got to factor in, you're still actually better than like eight, nine other teams. So I think being top two is fine. But if they want that secured number one spot, best team in the LEC, I think that this roster also is going to go through various issues. We've seen a lot of Fnatic rosters over the years go through issues. It's just that they're not really... Uh, how would I say they, say this? They're not really messy like a lot of other other teams are, like a lot of players are, where they'll, you know, tweet something out or they'll say something during a video that they probably shouldn't have. And we're probably going to have to see uh, where Fnatic want to translate this roster to. What is this roster's end goal? You know what I mean? And this comes with also having a new coach and having self-made. Now, we know that Fnatic had internal issues. I, I think that it's been very uh, spoken about by a lot of people. It was, uh, from what I've heard, it was like breaking point in there. Yeah, TL breaking point. You guys remember that? That bad. So let's see if S Nemesis can play better with his friend Selfmade than Broxa. Maybe Selfmade and Broxa didn't get along. Nemesis, from what I've seen, is not really the nicest guy. So Obviously, when they're losing, he's probably not going to be the best person to be around. That type of atmosphere is going to obviously bring the team a lot down. I'm not saying he's toxic, but that's just what I see from the outside. I mean, I've seen this with a lot of other players, and it always tends to be true. So I'm going to go with my gut right here. So looking at all the other players coming in, or the new coach, Mithy, I th think there's going to be a clashing of personalities. I think that this is going to be good for a certain point in time. This is going to be really good. They might, Who knows? They might even win spring. But, but, the issue is, I think that this will all um, cap out to a certain point. I think that they will hit something, but I just can't put my finger on it yet. I like the moves they're doing. I think that they're still going to be a top two team in the LEC. I just don't really have faith in their personalities to overall mesh together to the point where it's a consistent amount through the entire year. I think that Hillisang is a completely different polar opposite person than Selfmade. And the same thing goes for Bwipo. Bwipo just seems like, why would his personality even fit with these guys? And those type of uh, personality clashes will eventually all bridge into something. Now, that could all not mean anything. It's just before the split started, we've seen no synergy issues uh, yet because we obviously haven't seen them play. But... Uh, from what I've seen on the outside, I just don't know if this is a Fnatic roster that's going to go without issues. I mean, every single team goes with issues at some point, so we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out. Oh, and people blamed Broxa for a lot of what problems Fnatic went through when he really wasn't an issue all that much as people made him out to be. Let's see if Selfmade cannot be an issue, because usually 
I mean, you when you lose a game in league, you're always kind of blaming the jungler anyway. So it's like, let's see what's going to happen, right? All right, so let's see what's next. Origin's new roster will reach for the stars in 2020. Origin have had a busy offseason picking up three new players, uh, Xerxes, Upset, and former Oceana support Destiny. There are plenty of upsides to, to this new roster, and the young lineup could become something amazing in 2020. Xerxes has always been an interesting jungler to follow, since he tends to flip-flop between looking like a top 3 jungler in the region to having pretty bad games. He was important when conditioned for Splice in 2019, and should be equally as important for Origin next year. The bottom lane, however, is the most exciting prospect to watch out for on this team. Upset has already proven that he has the potential to be a top 3 ADC in Europe. I mean, in my opinion, he's already a top 3 ADC. While Destiny went to Worlds for the first time this year with Mammoth and showed that he too had plenty of promise in store for the LEC. On paper, Origin looks like a top 3 team in the league. Origin actually does look like a top 3 team again. I think that... I don't know what the fuck happened to the point where they collapsed the way they did. I'm pretty sure it had to just be internal issues. I mean, to, it's really kind of weird though. Mithy leaves Origin, Ghost has success on G2, TS, and well, has success on G2, and then he came back to Origin. He had minor success over there, then left again. It, it's really weird how all these storylines pan out. It's really, 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 really weird. But uh, their issues are, I don't really know. It's <sighs> Hard to say what their issues are gonna be. Upset Destiny, um, what's the fuck? What's it? Nuke Duck, Alfari, Xerxes. Again, personality clashes. I just don't see these players as playstyles really meshing together. Um, Nuke Duck, I think his playstyle will work better with Xerxes than it did for um Colds or Colds, Colds, yeah, Colds, and. When you're looking at the top side alone, it should be pretty good. On paper, it should seem really good. But looking at how Upset and Destiny will pair together, I think that as a new bot lane, they're going to have quite a number of issues. But if Destiny has enough promise, then we're going to see uh, what promise he actually has. I saw good things from him from watching the Oceana region. And I saw good promise from Upset all last, all this previous year. So I'm really happy to see what what this team can achieve. I think they'll be a top three team in uh in general moving forward. I don't think there's much else past them beside Rogue, but I do think their roster is actually pretty good. They arguably have a top two mid. They arguably have a top five top laner. Arguably a top three jungler. Arguably top three ADC. With those no, with those kind of calculations, obviously a top three team. So let's move on. Mad Lions make their debut. Um, Mad Lions basically are Splice rebranded. The people who were obviously investing into, into Splice didn't believe in the brand. So they chose to make the, the decision to replace Splice with Mad Lions. And they brought over rookies from their or organization. It was already pretty much known that Splice was going to break up after this anyway. And Humanoid has shown a lot of really good things during this year and he's grown as a player in my own personal opinion and I think that this new roster we're gonna have to see things that we're not really going to expect they are a rookie of newbie so I mean theoretically they just could get 10th place um not saying they're bad but Let's be honest here. A team of rookies are not going to know how to play on the stage a lot more effectively. Or, let's be honest here, they could just play their own way and be a really good squad. So, that's what I expect out of Mad Lions. There's not much I can really say about them. I don't really know any of these players personally. And you also have uh, other things happening on other rosters too. Although Mad Lions might have some hiccups along the way. And does every rookie roster, the potential they have to go in, they have to grow into stars is undeniable. We've only seen great things come from this team like SK Gaming's Crown Shot or uh, Fnatic's Nemesis, self-made. Uh, let's hope that these four newbies can bring the heat into 2020. And G2 is the last team to talk about. G2 Esports finds strength through solidarity. After the most successful year of any Western team since Fnatic won Worlds in Season 1, doesn't count, uh, it's a, just, just people should stop counting that. G2 Esports have decided to run back their championship winning roster for another year. The European powerhouse came, came so close to 
capturing the Summers Cu Summoners Cup this year, but were thwarted by a determined fun plus Phoenix. Next year, however, could be a different story. This team is so far ahead of the competition in the LEC, and they're only going to get better as they gain more experience with international talent, boasting some of the best players in the world with some of the most creative strategies we've seen. G2 are ready and willing to take another deep run for the World Championship. So, looking at G2, there's not much I'm going to say right now, because I have their, a dedicated video for them already coming up, but uh, there's not really much they can really do, other than just obviously, you know, get better in terms of not getting burned out. We've heard that as a problem with them before. Uh, I think that another one of their issues, outside of being pretty good, is they need to obviously understand that they have to find a way to get better in their own region to improve their self in, you know, going to international international competition. That's going to be pretty hard. They have the same problem that TL does, which is, you know, obviously an issue. But I think their only competition this year is um, Fnatic still. I think that's going to be a problem for a bit here with Europe is that there's only two teams that are really able to compete with each other at the top level. And you have a team in third place that's not as good as these two teams, but can still be able to obviously uh, be a contender in the region. Or, who knows, we could see a new winner this split. I mean, there hasn't been a new winner in EU since 2014. Do you know how old I was back in 2014? I was like 19 years old. There has not been a winner, a new winner in EU for a while. Like, it, it's, it's been a while. And if you, that's, and I, Obviously, I paired G2 and Fnatic together. It's just been them, and then that one split where it's been pretty, pretty much an entirely different person. Other than that, it's been five titles for G2 and seven titles for Fnatic. Like, that's really crazy, isn't it? It's just that, what can they do to really bolster up their region while keeping themselves at a really good competitive uh, spirit? I think that when you look at what they're going to do this year with flexing between caps and perks between the ADC role gives them more flexibility. We know they love to play League of Legends. Uh, they love the game so much that they just love playing it. it just like me. I just like playing League just because I like playing League. It's not a job for me. It's just I just love the game. And that's what we can see here. They are the best Western team in League of Legends history. Uh based off well, literal feats and literal stats and literal accolades. I mean, you know, the games by them were incredible this year. But overall, I think that they can easily win spring with having the most cohesion going into uh, spring. I think that in summer they'll be challenged. But, you know, obviously we see how spring works. Spring usually is favored toward the team with the most synergy, who was able to, you know, get early practice in, who was able to get their roster together, who was able to get down their play styles more effectively. And that's what I think are the better things going for G2. I'll have a dedicated video for them a lot later on, like I have for these other uh, EU teams coming up. But that is it, my ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I know I got some EU watches around here. I got a lot of Fnatic fans too. Uh, but hey, I'm a G2 fan, and I think we're going to win Spring. Because we're the best, and we're the kings. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the best LEC storylines to follow in the 2020 season. Like, comment, subscribe, most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing, and Way of Life Esports is signing out. Goodbye. Hi you guys, you. be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>